wisdom for success. We are taking on a burden which God has not given us. And we are trying to bear it without His aid. We are taking upon ourselves the responsibility that belongs to God. Do you understand that? That belongs to God. You know, all of our sin He paid for in the cross. He said, give it to me. It's mine. And I'm going to give you my righteousness. Yeah. It's a deal that you just can't pass up. I'm going to give. I'm going to take from you something you can't keep anyway, so you, so I can give you something that you can never lose. Think about that. Amen. Think about that. And thus, are really putting ourselves in His place. We're trying to do all of these things. We're putting ourselves in God's place. We may well have anxiety and anticipate danger and loss, for it is certain to befall us. Right? I mean, there's times of famine, and there's times of feast. There's seasons of warm and seasons of cold. Solomon has a whole bunch to say about that stuff. But when we really believe that God loves us and means to do us good, we shall cease to worry about the future. I know lots of people that are worried about the future. We shall trust God as a child trusts a loving parent. Then our troubles and torments will disappear. For our will is swallowed up in the will of God. Amen. Think about that. Your will swallowed up in the will of God. So everything that you do is exactly what God would have you do. And it is your very will. Imagine that. Is there any greater peace that you could possibly have? This is the kind of peace that Jesus had. Because the mind of Christ never wavered. He followed every step. He was led by the Holy Spirit into some terrible places to be tested even of 40 days. Right? Tormented of the devil. But he came out victorious. We can have these same kind of experiences if we follow the Holy Spirit the way he did. And he said, we can. Yes. And he's asking us to. Amen. Christ has given us no promise of help in bearing today the burden of tomorrow. Did you hear that? He has said, my grace is sufficient for thee. But like the manna given in the wilderness, his grace is bestowed daily for the day's need. Like the host of Israel in their pilgrim life, we may find morning by morning the bread of heaven for the day's supply. One day alone is ours. One day. And during this day, we are to live for God. For this one day, we are to place in the hand of Christ in solemn service all our purposes This is serious, brothers and sisters. This, this stuff is dead serious. Amen. Casting all our care upon him, for he careth for us. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Jeremiah 29, 11, and Isaiah 30, 15. If you will seek the Lord and be converted every day, okay? If you will seek the Lord and be converted every day, if your will of your own spiritual choice be free and joyous in God, if with gladsome consent of heart to His gracious call, you come wearing the yoke of Christ, the yoke of obedience and service. 
all your murmurings will be stilled. All your difficulties will be removed. All the perplex perplexing problems that now confront you will be solved. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I want us to turn to John, my favorite of the Gospels, John chapter 19. And I want to begin in verse 1. And this is where we'll close through chapter 19. <laughs> Are you there? Amen. Starting in verse 1, chapter 19, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. It said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Can you imagine the King of Kings? The King of Kings, so humble. I just can't even imagine. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him. So why do you let him get beaten if you find no fault in him? What kind of man are you? Was he not warned of his wife? I think men don't listen to their wives today. They weren't doing it way back then either. <laughs> Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. It's almost as though he says, Is this not enough? Right? Behold the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Does that even make sense? How do the scribes and Pharisees say, crucify him? For what has he done? Listen, I, I, I gotta tell you something. If, the, these scribes and Pharisees, if you're not a believer, you have no choice but to hate. But to hate Jesus. Okay? There is no middle ground. If you do not believe, you hate and want to murder him. Amen. Then Jesus answered him, we have a law at verse 7. No, the Jews, not Jesus, I'm sorry, verse 7. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence thou art, whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith, saith Pilate unto him, Speaketh thou not unto me? Knoweth thou not that I have the power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou could have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Can you imagine being Pilate? I would have trembled. I would have trembled. I think I would have fallen down on my knees right there. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh him a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. There's... Some deep study right there in that verse that we certainly don't have time to go into. But, anyways. And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, 
away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered and said, We have no king but Caesar. We have no king but Caesar. They delivered he him therefore and unto, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. Listen, um, may not be called Caesar anymore, but the civil government is alive and well. Amen. And, uh, you know, these uh, people that will side on the side of Christ will be called very terrible, horrible names. They will be drug away. And this world will once again lose its mind. It's already happening. We need to be awake, brothers and sisters, and we need to be focused where the focus needs to be. And it certainly isn't on what everybody's trying to get us to think about each other and act like. We have to remember that God is about freedom, right? He's about real freedom. And our civil government that was started that way has forgotten her beginnings. They asked Benjamin Franklin when they come out, what government have you, have you given us? Says that we've given you a constitutional republic if you can keep it. If you can keep it. Jesus Christ has given you salvation. Amen. It's up to you what you choose to do. Amen. Our closing song will be 249.
so. Let her, let her focus be what it ought to be. Let, uh, let her wills be given to God because that's all we really have to give. That's all we have. That's it. Your will. You owe nothing. Even the breath in your lungs is not yours. Because everything is borrowed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you love us beyond what we could even think or comprehend. You're more willing to forgive us than we are even to ask for forgiveness. Lord, we want to be more intimate with you. Help us to see the things that block us from seeing you the way we ought to see you. Help us so that we can dig in deeper and have more intimacy. Let us not have casual contact but deep fellowship with you. Lord, I, I know so many people are struggling with so many things and there's so much sickness and sadness and hardship all over. Lord, I pray that you would put your finger on a place that only you can put. That you would touch us and heal our wounds, Lord, in Jesus' name.